Hi, I'm Bishop Derek W. Hutchins. I'm the Bishop of the Georgia Cosmopolitan Fellowship of Churches, as well as the proud pastor, senior pastor of the New Life Church of God in Christ here in Orlando, Florida. Our world is reeling and rocking with the ruination of our cities, our urban areas, our downtown areas are being uh, under attack from the inside out. Yeah, this one is an inside job. Uh, we uh, are likened unto that time in the scriptures uh, when Nehemiah came back to Jerusalem. He came back because he wanted to rebuild Jerusalem. Nehemiah's name means comfort. He wanted to bring comfort to his people and to his city. Our people need comfort and our cities need rebuilding. In the case of Nehemiah, the Bible declared that he came uh, during the time of Chislu, which is a Hebrew term for December. And uh, in that first chapter, it says that there was desolation that had taken place in the city. For the walls had been destroyed and the gates had been burned with fire. Sound like present devastation, doesn't it? Nehemiah went to a heathen king and asked for permission that he might return unto Jerusalem and bring restitution and restoration to his people and to his city. We too need Nehemiah. We need someone to come and assert the effort uh, of a collective cooperative mission. In other words, we need to get to work. We need to get to work. Uh, get to work in what way? We need to get to work rebuilding. We're rebuilding the walls. The walls of our society have been torn asunder. And our very gates burn with the social injustice and the racial uh, discontent and societal racism. We are in a problematic situation, but uh, we can rebuild. The looting and shooting, the various crimes where you see devastation in the major metropolitan cities of our nation. But we can rebuild the walls. Did you hear me? We can rebuild the walls. Let's start with Nehemiah's approach. First, the Bible says he wept, he mourned, and he prayed. He prayed. And if our nation is going to survive this recent upheaval, it's going to be because we prayed. Not only did he pray, but he asked God to move that he might be able to do. That is, we've got to pray, but we've got to act. He went to the city, and he began to observe the ruin. And when he began to observe the ruin in that second chapter, you'll find where he said, I told no man the thing that the Lord had placed in my heart. Everything that the Lord has placed in your heart, everybody is not ready for your dream. Everybody is not ready for the actions that God is going to lead you to do to make a difference. He said, I told no man the things that the Lord had placed in my heart. Don't let these professional balloon busters uh, <laughs> burst your vision for the future. We can rebuild. Yes, we can. We can rebuild the walls of our communities. We can rebuild the walls of our nation. We can rebuild the walls of our family structure. We can rebuild the walls of our school systems. We can rebuild the walls of our economic uh, downfall. We can rebuild the walls. The Bible says in that fourth chapter of Nehemiah, so built we the walls because the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. Let's get busy, not just talking and meeting and greeting, but let's get busy and let's get back to the work and let's rebuild the walls of our community. Let's rebuild the walls 
of our social justice system. Let's rebuild the walls of our capitalistic, materialistic society. Let's rebuild the walls so there is equity across the border, equity in housing, equity in educational opportunities. Your zip code should not determine the quality of your education. Let's rebuild the walls. How can we be 13% of the general population of America and then uh, at least 80% of the prison population? Let's rebuild our social justice system. How can we be 13% of the national population and 60% of all arrests? Let's rebuild the walls. The Bible said they rebuilt the walls because the people had a mind to work. I want to read a scripture, a verse of scripture to you uh, as to how we can do it uh, if we take an example from Nehemiah. The Bible says that Nehemiah said to the people in that, uh, it was the fourth chapter and the 17th verse, it says, and they which built on the wall and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with his, every one, listen to this, every one with those that had their hands in the work. We need everyone to get your hands in the work. We need everyone. And the work doesn't stop with just community activism. We must get busy and get our people to the polls. Our voting has been more, is more crucial now than ever before. We have got to get to work. Every hand in the work. The 21st verse says, so we labored in the work. This is going to be labor. And nothing comes with great gain without great strain. We're going to need to understand that we are facing difficult times ahead. And it's going to require each one of us getting to work. We may not be able to do what others can do, but we can do what we can do. Every hand in the work. This latter part of the verse says, Likewise, at the same time said I unto the people. This is Nehemiah talking. He said, Let every one with his servant lodge with Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. I like what he says, they must work day and night. This is going to take due diligence in order for us to bring about real change. We cannot afford, my Christian brothers, my believing sisters in the faith, we cannot afford to be so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. If ever there was a time our world needs us to pray, it is now. But they need us to do more than pray. They need us to activate, activate to produce the change that's necessary in our society. The looting and shooting, the negative riotous acts are only a distraction from our main agenda. Let us stay focused as we get to work. We're going to have to rebuild the walls, and we're going to have to reinstitute our gates. We're going to have to protect our children and our generations yet unborn. Let those who come behind us, we won't be here always, loved ones, but let those who come behind us, let them judge this generation faithful, faithful to producing the necessary change that ultimately must come to pass. I join you in prayer, but I also join you in action.